In this short video, I'm going to explain how you can set up HubSpot email workflows. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your HubSpot account and make sure that you have automations and workflows enabled. Go to workflows and then from here, you'll be able to create your first workflow. So a workflow is basically an automated step of sequences that you are going to create. And within those sequence steps, you'll be able to do different things like send an email, maybe do a delay, maybe send someone a phone call, but there's different things you're going to do. So to get started, you click on create workflow and then you have the option to choose a template. So they have different templates here that you can choose from. I like to start from scratch just because I like to do, you know, my workflows my way and I get to have full control and flexibility of what I'm trying to do. Um, so I always start from scratch and then from there you can choose if you want to do a contact based, a company based, a deal based, a ticket based, a quote based, conversation based. So it just depends on all of what you're trying to do. But basically the difference between each of these triggers is the trigger itself. So you're going to trigger the workflow based on a contact record or you're going to trigger the workflow based on a company record. So it just depends on what you're trying to do. Most of the things that I personally do are contact based because I'm following up with people. But if you're doing, you know, B to be in doing deals or you're doing support and you're trying to make sure that people get the right tickets then you might do a ticket based or you might do a deal based it's just totally up to what you're trying to do so once you understand the differences between these you can play around with them to see you know the difference between each but for now i'm just going to show you contact base and i'm going to do start from scratch i'm going to click on next and then from here i'm going to begin setting up the workflow so all workflows start the same you have to set an enrollment trigger so basically how is this particular workflow going to start? So you click on this orange button and then you can make that decision. So there's different triggers that you can start a workflow from. You can do it based on contact properties, company properties, deal properties. And within each of these filter types, there's other layers. So like I'm in the contact property filter type, but then there's different layers within that. So I can do, you know, trigger this particular workflow based on the lead status or the status. Or if they're in a particular workflow, I can start this workflow. There's a lot that you could do. What I like to do is map out my workflow. So I'll use a tool like draw.io. I really like diagrams. So like I'll diagram out what I'm trying to do first. And this would just help me help my brain understand like what needs to happen. And then I can go inside of HubSpot and then build that out based on the different properties that, you know, I mapped out inside of the diagram. But like I said, there's so many different ways that you can actually start this trigger. So I think one of the easiest ways for this example is to do a form submission filter type. It's so simple. It's basically whenever someone submits a form on a particular form that you have in your account, um, it will trigger this workflow. So let's say that someone sends a submission from this cart fuel form and we save it every time that this person or person submits something from this form, it's going to trigger this workflow as long as the workflow is on. So now we can hit this little plus icon and we can do different things. So we can do a delay. So let's say that we wanted to wait, you know, an hour before the next action happens. We can do that. So we'll say one hour, wait one hour. And then what happens after that? We can enroll them in another workflow or we can trigger a webhook. We can do custom code. We can do if then branches, which is really cool. So let's say that if we send an email and then we can do an if then branch, which is like if they open this email, do this. Or if they don't open this email, do that. Really powerful. Again, can get really complex if you don't know what you're trying to do so again use the diagrams map it out so that you when you come in here you know exactly what you're going to do and then from there you can you know send an email so let's say you want to send an email i already have an email set up but you can easily set up new emails just by clicking on create new email and then within this area you can set it up so you can set up the body the subject all that good stuff but for now for keeping this video pretty short i'm just going to select one of my emails that i already have i'm going to click on save and now I have a really simple workflow. That's how easy it is. You just really need to know what you're trying to do. But once you understand the flexibility, the functionality that HubSpot gives you, it becomes really simple. You set up a contact enrollment trigger or enrollment trigger based on what that enrollment trigger is. It's going to do a certain action after that person matches the enrollment trigger. So you can set up different things. So after this, we can do, you know, we can add them to a list or we can add them to an ad audience. We can set their property value for the sales team or for your own number. Going, right maybe you want to make sure that they before we dive into the rest of the video we like to thank our video sponsor cart fuel cart fuel is the easiest and quickest way for you to accept one-time and recurring payments in hubspot all you need to do is connect your stripe or paypal account configure your payment form by adding countdown timers coupons or order bumps then copy and paste the code they provide you onto any site including wordpress or hubspot pages did you mention cart fuel has one click upsells that's right your customers can order more products without having to re-enter their credit or debit card with a single click 
But you want to know what's the best part? When a sale occurs with CartFuel, your customer's name, email address, phone number, and products they purchase will teleport into HubSpot. It's like magic. This means you can trigger workflows to boost customer retention and decrease refund rates. All this and more with no custom code needed. Try CartFuel for free for 14 days by clicking the link in the description or comment section of this video. All right, let's get back to the content have the right property value. I know some of the people that I work with, they use the property value function for um, their support team. So you can do something like that. So you can create a record, you can rotate records to new owners. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Again, do use the diagrams, map it out, play around. That's the best way to learn in my opinion is to like do everything, like literally play with all these things. And then you really can get a good understanding of how it works, you know, do a test form submission and then set up a test workflow that no one else is going to use besides you internally in your company so that you can understand how these different functionalities work. And then you'll be able to really do complex setups once you know all these different things. I like sending, you know, you can send SMSs and then you can also, if you have an apps, you can connect different apps. So I know I have some people that I work with, they use voice calls. So they basically have different call, uh, just call. That's what it's called, just call. And when you connect it, I don't have mine connected, but when you connect it, you're literally able to do calls from a workflow, which is really cool. There's a lot of different apps that you can use that are third party. As long as you connect it, you'll be able to implement these apps inside of your workflows to give you even more functionality and more power when you have these really complex setups. So. Once you set up your workflow, this is how easy it is. It's really, really simple. All you need to do is make sure you have that enrollment trigger, maybe do some delays. You don't have to do a delay, you know, set up your emails. And then once you have that set up, make sure you have a good name. Obviously this is a test, so I'm not giving it a name, but make sure you name it. And then in the settings, you can actually set up specific times that this workflow needs to go out. So maybe you only want this workflow to go out during the weekday, right? You don't want it to happen on the weekends because maybe you know your clients or your customers are not really active on the weekends, right? Maybe that's something that you know. So you can do that easily here. You can also tie the workflow to a campaign, meaning that if you can set up a campaign and then have this workflow tied to that campaign so that you can track to see, you know, if you're meeting your KPIs, right? So there's a lot of things that you can do in terms of making sure that your workflow is hitting the right metrics that you want. And then speaking on metrics, you can go to performance and then you can actually see how many people are enrolled, how many active contacts do you have? You can actually set up goals. So maybe you want to someone to go to a particular page. Maybe that's what you're doing. You're forcing them to go to a page in an email. You want them to click that link. That could be your goal, right? I don't know what you're trying to do, but again, you just have to map it out. You have to know what you're doing and you know, HubSpot will be there. It's a tool. So you have to know what you want to get the best use out of the tool, right? And then you can see what I personally love is the email trend. So you can literally see how many people got sent the email. If it was delivered, what percentage of it was delivered, if it was skipped, open, clicked, like I love this. And then it gives you a performance based on the email so that you can go back to your emails to see, okay, this email is not really performing well. Let me, you know, edit this email, maybe make the CTA more apparent, right? There's different things that you could do and it shows you based on the performance levels. And then again, it gives you some more data. This is a test, so it's not really going to show you that much, but it really gives you a lot of stuff to look into really easily so that you can make better decisions, better data driven decisions with your email marketing. And then you could look at the history based on like if someone did a particular thing, you could check out the contacts as well. Once you have this all set up though, all you need to do to turn it on is click on review. It's going to show you basically if there's existing contacts that match the enrollment trigger. And if you want to include those people inside of the workflow, you don't have to, maybe you only want future people to go into this workflow. If that's the case, you just click on no. And then you basically just review everything you can edit. If you made a mistake or something, you can click on edit. And then all you need to do to turn it on is turn it on and then boom you have a active workflow so it's that easy to set up email workflows inside of hubspot it's not that hard but again it all comes down to what you're trying to do and if you understand by using diagrams you can really understand like what you're trying to do and then it'll be a breeze coming in here but again play around with it to see what it can do so that way when you come in here you become a master basically just by playing around right that's the best way to learn in my opinion anyway um i digress thank you guys for watching that's the end of the video that's how you set up email workflows if you like this type of content please subscribe and leave a comment down below to let us know what type of content you want to see and we'll make that content for you give us a thumbs up so that other people like yourself can watch videos like this one thank you guys again and we'll see you in the next video